technology can be a force for great good. But as we've seen, it can also be a force for ill. At restaurants, airport, a train, and parks, I see recent more and more parents hand over their smartphones or games to their infant. When the infant begins to blubber, the kids become silent, but the parents do not take pains to soothe their kids. They just use a no sweat way to make the kids quiet. This is very convenient for the parents, but the fundamental problem for children is also that they are quiet and also that it might look like they are behaving themselves. So the parent thinks, I'm a good parent, my children's not making noise in the restaurants, the children's not be an anti social. The problem is that children is not learning self regulations, so they are not learning to self calm, to self regulate their behavior. What you are doing is distracting them, so they are not learning to sit quietly. They are not learning to listen. What is being done is they are being stimulated, 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 something that looks quiet. But actually what is happening for them is that they brought mental way. It's not quiet. It's very noisy. What's happening when they are looking at this? And the point is when, the, when that child, two or three, is given these devices and these screens, constant stimulation. What happened to the children when they go to school? Teacher says, you have to sit quietly. The child does not have the ability to self-regulate. Saying these children are very difficult to control and these children don't know how to actually sit and to be calm and to focus. Technology, symbolic relationship between man and machine should be one that is mutually beneficial. Symbiosis is living together well, no one dominating the other. If we will become less than human as a result of our interactions with technology, that relationship is not symbiotic. If our children turn into some sort of a cyber Pavlov, Pavlovi and the dogs, swiping, swipe, swiping, swiping again, the children spend up to 10 hours a day meaningless the swiping. Where they are monitoring some children's, the technology is monitoring. They are not even leading, they are just a swipe, swipe. So, the smartphone it is designed to demolish it as it's a species rather than make us stronger. If we look at the design, basically the flashing of lights in the nature is like a signal theory, where a bird flashes its feathers or its tail. The noise around are like in nature, like the call of the monkey to get our attention. When we cannot see that light and we cannot hear the noise a lot, it vibrated to get our attention. So every aspect of a psychological theory has been employed to make this addictive. I know that limiting a child's access to the internet is not a good idea. 
The result will be that once a child ends up getting left behind in our modern world, which depends so much on the internet, children's school becomes relevant and internet usage was definitely the greatest proportion. This has always happened considering the companies like Facebook and Google. If we teach children that the internet is bad or dangerous, they would not be able to keep up with their peers. It would be like telling children 100 years ago not to use a telephone. You cannot stop progress. All technology offers both benefits and risks. And the internet is just another example of this. I don't think it is realistic anymore to imagine that parents can limit their children's access to the internet. The technology just to ubiquitous. Children will always find a way to get online. And besides, if parents their children not to do something, children will always use that as a reason to do it. It's just a human nature. Parents have to accept the presence of the internet and their children's life and prepare them for it. Parents must teach children that internet is both good and bad and show them how to take advantage of its benefit and avoid its danger. We live in an age of technology and effectively technology as as a, a lot abundant as the air that we believe, the water that we drink, so we cannot help. And one of the reasons that's going to be difficult to have an addiction model is because the treatment of addiction is abstinence. So we cannot abstain upon technology. We need to learn to change our relationship with technology. In a world without digital privacy, even if you have done nothing wrong other than think differently, you began to censor yourself. Not entirely, at first, just a little bit. To list less, to hope less, to imagine less, to dare less, to create less, to try less, talk less, to think less. The chilling is effective, digital surveillance is profound and it touches everything. On the internet, you have professional journalists competing for your attention with people who know journalism background, who just make things up. They know that people will be attracted to the most sensational stories, even if they are not true. So there are all sorts of rumors, conspiracy theories on the internet, and people who use it as their primary sources of information level in the world of confusions. So something is good for us, the next day it is bad for our houses. One day global warming is happening, the next day it isn't. 
to many sources and to radio accuracy. A vast number of people are genuinely addicted by design. And furthermore, there's no place else to go. If I wanted to enjoy the genuine benefits, so most people will not or cannot quit. But it's important to bring us the idea to ask people to quit because it's an opportunity for self-discovery where young people where they can experience the world in a contrasted way. Self-knowledge is the very most important kind and it also created the body of people in the world even if they are in a minority who can see things a different way so that we are not all stuck to within this one system. The vast majority of the people who decrease their use of these manipulative systems, the part increased happiness, increased knowledge of the news, and more personal time and the better relationships, political discussions, and the differences, personal differences. People on chat forums are sometimes rude. It is like the lack of face-to-face -face communication gives the permission to be obnoxious and insulting. People have called the stupid and the shallot and so forth and just for sharing the opinion different from theirs. That has never happened to me in real life. Of course, I realize that social media makes it possible to interact with people we would not otherwise meet, but it also takes away the simple requirement of decency and respect. People feel like because they are online, they say whatever they want and get away with it. Shouldn't the government have a law in figuring out the deep things? Government has a lot to play. With the ability to pick up something and the grocery stories at the lead at nutrition level, go to the pharmacy and not worry about whether the drug is safe. Get an airplane and be confident and its safety. It's all because we have what I would call the balanced and healthy regulations. Only digital technology has probably gone more decayed, largely unregulated than any technology in the history of technology. So whether it's competition's role or privacy or security, one of the fundamental point is we needed to the tax sector to step up and we needed to government to more first. What about um, privacy? The companies are selling our information. Where we browse, where we shop, and profiting off of it. We don't get anything on the terms. We get the free products, but we do, don't get. We don't get loyalty from. 
We don't know how much of our, of our privacy is invaded. There needs to be a real reform and a strengthening of our privacy laws. We need to identify the kind of abusers and fear marketing to children. Deceptive practices. What is the fundamental potential exploitation of disadvantage the people and have the kind of laws and will prevent that from happening? Social media as a tool, like the telephone and the email, all have done the same things in that they have broadened the possibility of who we can communicate with. Social media enables people to learn new things and meet new people and share fresh ideas literally every day. And for me, that it has been a wonderful experience to chat and share it online. It's very clear that my character has changed because of my SNS addictions. I didn't evidence show that there's a stunning level of insecurity, weird irritability, then the kind of uh, degradations as a victim. The reason I said that is that the process of addictions gradually allowed my free will because I became the beholden to the addictive cycle. It's quite in social media the most finely targeted way to resist the insanity of our time is.
the problem is if somebody tried to create a campaign to oppose the data of Facebook and Twitter because the algorithms are looking for the most irritated and upset people who become the most engaged, it will backfire. So in order to protest this, we must not play the game at all. We've created a society where anytime two people are connected over the internet, it's financed exclusively by third parties for which to manipulate them. It's a society based on tricky and the deceit and must not communicate it on this line.